I do have a pumpkin. You are live with the app show with Mike Agarbo and John Beeler. We're your guide to the world of apps and mobile tech. Everything from uh, the latest in smartphones, the coolest apps, and even things like smart TVs and smart cars. On today's show, we've got a lot to talk about. Uh, We're going to give you our first impressions of the new iPhone 12 and 12 Pro. Yes, we've got our grubby little fingers uh, on uh, these phones for the past week, and uh, we've run them through their paces. We'll also be talking with Ted Kritsonos our man in Toronto, about Tile Premium as part of our uh, subscription services. We've covered everything from uh, music subscriptions to things like Netflix. Uh, this is Tile, those little uh, little tags or trackers you can put on your keys or your bike. Or your dog. Or your dog. Well, they've got a subscription for that. That makes it even easier to find the stuff that you've lost. And the top five spooky Halloween apps. We're going to give you a rundown of our uh, our favorites. But let's talk about some of the app news and mobile news out there, uh, John. This was kind of uh, interesting. Google's got a new hum to search feature. So do you remember uh, Shazam or SoundHound? These are apps that you could launch on your phone. I think Apple actually bought Shazam. Yeah, I think it's built in now. Yeah, Does and there. it uh, once you turn it on, it'll tell you what song you're listening to. Well, sometimes that song might not be handy. <laughs> what if you just kind of have it in your head? Well, with that new Google hum to search feature, you can hum the song. And then you can find out that you've actually thought it was a different song altogether. (laughs) Or you're really bad at humming. Well, there's, that's me. Yes. Yeah. I can't hum. (laughs) It's so funny. Like I, I I remember way back in the day, you know, you'd be listening to the radio and you just kind of miss the the title of the song, that song that's really cool. You're hearing all the time. Do you remember those days? (laughs) What did you do to find that song? You just wait till it came on the radio again. Well, if it was on the radio, it probably came back on in 10 minutes. My problem was like, I like some of the older stuff. Yeah. And so then that song never comes on again. Right. But you probably could call into the radio station and ask them because there was who, no internet. Who did that? I did that. Did you? Yeah. You'd call in. Yeah. Oh. I used to work a, a, at a restaurant Yeah. that has a drive through in a big M. Um, and we worked the night shift. And we would just call the radio station and get them to play our favorite songs. No. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, I remember back, I think it was, um, was it in the early 2000s or the late 90s? Sony came out with a little gizmo, little tiny thing that you could take in your car with you. And if you heard a song that you like, you, you hit the button on this thing and it would record it. And then you'd have to go back when you finished your drive to your computer and plug it in. And then it would try to figure out what song it was. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah. This kind of reminds me, remember in computer magazines at the back, you'd have like a little card. Yes. Oh, I really like that ad. Yeah. You, little checkbox. <laughs> exactly. Well, uh, well, with this new feature here, uh, I think it's awesome, but we'll see how well it works. We're going to be trying it out this week. Yes, I think so. Also in the tech news, uh, in the mobile side, a mini Pong arcade machine is on the way. I love the idea of this. This is a really cool looking little gadget. Yeah. It's about roughly eight inches for a screen with two little paddles on either side. I've seen pictures of it. And so the idea with Pong, you got to play your friend. Yeah. You have to be pretty close. Right. Yes. Yeah. And then you have to hope that one of you is left-handed, I guess. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Yeah. I, I love Pong. Pong was the first game I ever played. I remember specifically where I first saw this and I was entranced by it. I was in a in a submarine shop, like a sandwiches or like a submarine I mean a... <laughs> sandwiches. Okay, in Kelowna, and they had this as a table that you would sit at. You'd get your sandwich, you'd sit down, and then in the in the glass of the table, you would actually play pong. And I thought that was like the best thing ever. Technology has arrived. Yeah, you were in the computer age. <laughs> I was in some kind of age. It's you know what's funny, John. Um, Like the kids now, like I've grown up kids and can they play video games? You know what I mean? Like on the Xbox and computers, like they just kill me. I don't even play them anymore because I just get annihilated, especially in the shooting games and stuff. Like, you know, they're playing like these army guys and they can snipe someone from like three miles away. Mike Ackerbro is not a sniper. No, no, no. (laughs) Um, 
So, you know, I've been talking about, I've built an arcade machine in my garage. You haven't stopped talking about it. No. And so my son was over with his girlfriend and I showed him and he's like, wow, super cool. And I played Dig Dug with him. He was the worst ever. He couldn't, he couldn't play it. Finally. Finally. <laughs> yeah. Take that. Take that kids. Uh, also in the news, Xbox talking about playing games. They've got uh, Xbox remote play and it launches on the iPhone, iOS. Yeah. Th- so explain this. This is cool. So yeah, they actually launched this a little while ago for Android. And the idea behind it is you have your Xbox, uh, Xbox one, the current generation of Xbox, uh, sitting on your, um, in your living room. Yes. And you're not at home. It's got to be turned on. It's got to be turned on. Yes. But you're somewhere else. You're in the office hiding from your boss and you want to play a game. You can fire up this app and it will stream the game to your phone like you're there. And you can actually pair a Bluetooth controller to your phone. Like an Xbox controller. Yeah. And you can play it. As long as your internet connection is a certain level, you're good. How is it with the speed and everything? Is it pretty good? I tried it a few times on the Android side. Yeah. And it was literally a day at launch. So I think it was just the servers were just getting hammered. So I had a few connection issues. I haven't tried the Apple version yet, the iOS version, because they just approved it. Um, but it, it it launched the game. I could actually, like I was in the same room as the, my Xbox when I was trying it. I could see my smartphone connected version of the game controlling the Xbox on, on my TV. So it's just like I'm there. It's like kind of like remote desktop for your Xbox. I'm going to try this out. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I just got to find the time. Yeah. Well, my, I, my arcade cabinet's calling me. Right. <laughs> Let's go play Dig Dug. <laughs> but I tried it like with a the Star Wars game, which was, you know, it's pretty high end, you know, where you're flying. Oh yeah. That's like a full 3D. Yeah. Like action. a full on game. And it actually, it did kind of play until the server crashed, but. Well, got to check that out. Yeah. You are listening to The App Show right now. Mike Agarwal here with John Beeler. We've got a lot more to talk about, including spooky Halloween apps, the Tile Premium subscription for all the Tile owners out there, the little uh, keychain things you put on so you don't lose them, uh, and our first impressions of the new iPhones. Stay tuned. You're back with The App Show. Mike and John here. Well, spooky times are coming. Halloween is almost here. And we have our top five Halloween apps. John, uh, I think any app countdown uh, would obviously have it's the great pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Yeah, this is actually a really cool app. It is a paid app though. It's $6.99 Canadian for iOS or Android. And it's called, it's the great pumpkin, Charlie Brown. It's an interactive storybook. And the really cool thing about this is that it actually lets you sort of go through the story um, of the great pumpkin and each page has something you can do with it whether it's playing on uh, linus's keyboard at some point uh clicking through and watching <laughs> that, some anime that is awesome yeah, the, yeah there's all kinds of neat little things in it and um I, I, it's super fun and if you've never isn't it schroeder's keyboard maybe yeah yeah he's the piano guy okay yeah you're right <laughs> it's been a while <laughs> we strive for accuracy here john <laughs> <laughs> the app show, but uh, oh god, I missed the great pumpkin. I missed the Charlie Brown yeah. shows. They're fantastic. But what a great way to share that with your kids now. Yeah, get them into the great pumpkin. Yeah, because this is, this is beyond just uh, watching the movie, which is highly recommended. Um, and is that on Apple TV? The Great Pumpkin. Yeah, they'll have to. They, I mean, they have Snoopy. Yeah, I think I think I might. bet they do. I, I bet they have that. Yeah. Okay, next one, uh, creepy pasta. Yeah, this is a. Uh, Interesting hand-picked horror stories from around the internet. There's apparently like 4,500 different stories. You, I think these are really meant for like telling around a campfire um, uh, with a, you know, a flashlight under your nose kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and it's um, for iOS, Android, and even for your Mac. Very, very cool. Have you looked at Vampify? Yeah. So... <laughs> This is another app that's kind of fun. Yeah, this this is basically, uh, for all intents and purposes, an Instagram filter for your photos that turns you into a vampire. And you can do different levels of sort of special effects makeup to your photo. And uh, they also have another version for zombies. It's 99 cents on Android and iOS. There's a zombie. Yeah, the zombie one's cool. Yeah, well, there's also uh, the Walking Dead one as well, which uh, hasn't been updated for, for a little while, but uh, it gives you the same kind of fun thing so you can make those uh, perfect avatars for your facebook or whatever okay next we have 
Ghost Lens. Yeah, this is a, a really fun, sort of like a movie making app that lets you use augmented reality to uh, add like ghostly effects to, you know, your house, your living room, your kitchen, the hallway that has the crazy carpet. So you can make it like The Shining. Um, uh, <laughs> It's pretty. It's a free app for iOS and Android, um, and uh, that does have an in-app purchase if you want to unlock all the features. But there's lots of different things, and basically you can create like a little horror story movie. Wouldn't that be great? Like to do that with the kids? Yeah, be like little Steven Spielberg's making some fun Halloween movies. Yeah, the, that's probably gonna be some pretty amazing ones right after Halloween. <laughs> Not before. Well, maybe, but you'll see them all yeah. after Halloween. Uh, bonus uh, one, Amazon's new AR app unlocks Halloween fun on your shipping boxes. Yeah, they have a, an app you can download. And when you get your, probably your Prime Day stuff, those boxes should have some little codes on them that you point your, this app at it. And then it lets you do some, some fun Halloween things with it. Like what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I haven't got an Amazon box to try it yet. Okay. Well, this uh, seems to be getting some buzz uh, on the net. So the next one uh, coming in, uh, I will have to uh, yep. try that uh, out. We're going to have to take a break. More apps to talk about here on the App Show. Stay tuned. You are back. Mike Agarbo here and John Beeler. Continuing our subscription series, we've got our good friend Ted Kritsonos out of Toronto. We've covered everything from uh, music subscriptions, book subscriptions, the world's going subscription. It's all 10 bucks a month. Getconnectedmedia.com. Get connected. Get connect oh, we got to do a subscription. <laughs> uh, Ted, we want to talk about uh, another subscription service now. And this is more to do with a, a hardware piece as well, Tile. These are these little uh, tile trackers. They make all sorts of different shapes and sizes that you can attach to your keys, your wallet, your dog, your kid, and uh, track them so you don't lose them. Uh, Ted, they've got a subscription service now called Tile Premium. Maybe you can walk us through how that all works. Yeah, so they introduced this uh, two years ago, and the idea was to expand on you know, the functionality and the tracking by adding some extra features that, well, that you probably might want in any case. Now, you can pay for this uh, on an annual basis. It's 35 bucks a year or $349 per month. So either way. And what you get is they will send you replacement batteries for your tile products. So the tile trackers where the battery is removable. So that's mainly the uh, Tile Mate and the Pro. Uh, so those two, uh, what, you know, you, you'll get replacement batteries sent to you. Um, so Tile will kind of inform you like, hey, you're, we see your battery is running a little, little bit low. We can send your replacements, just you know, confirm, and it'll be in the mail. So we got that. Now, to me, the bigger feature when they first when they first unveiled this a couple of years ago, and it still I think resonates today, is smart alerts. So this, in this case, you get an alarm. Like there's like a notification telling you, okay, hey, you you've left without your tile enabled or whatever whatever product or whatever whatever thing you have that has a tile in it, you've left without it. So, you know, with that kind of a notification, you can maybe, oh my God, I forgot my wallet or, oh, I, I forgot the dog uh, or heaven forbid, I forgot my kid. Um, or, or John uh, today forgot the microphone to bring to my house to record. Well, there, yeah. See, yeah. had he put a tile on that, that, that wouldn't have happened. Right. No. So, nice. so <laughs> and, and of course, keys and, you know, basically anything. Right. So, so the idea is there that uh, you would get the notification, it would tell you, and then you would, you would be alerted to it. Uh, unlimited sharing also applies here. So you can share a tile with family members so that they can get notifications and also can help uh, with tracking as well in case you've lost or misplaced something. Uh, you get 30 days of location history so you can see where the tile has been. This feature, you know, I get it. I understand the purpose of it. I am a little weary of it only because I feel like helicopter parents could really, or like really jealous, um, you know, couples. Uh, my one might take advantage of this sort of thing, uh, but it's there. Um, and it, if, and if, if, if you are a member, uh, you also get an extended warranty on the products of up to three years. So in case something happens, they, you know, they, they die or something goes wrong, uh, they can send a replacement. So Ted, this works. So these little tile trackers are tiny, right? They're like about the size of a quarter or like a postage stamp. Um, I, I've got a few. I've got one in my wallet. Um, 
It's not that I use my wallet anymore. <laughs> you have to have money to put in the wallet. Um, but essentially, they're they're Bluetooth trackers. So if, uh, yes. like you said, you do leave without it, you can get alerted. But if you lose your thing out there, whether that's a bike or uh, or your wallet or keys, uh, people in the community can basically because they're walking by where you might have lost it, you can get an alert to where it kind of is. Yeah. So uh, for other people who are part of the Tao community, their phones become uh, almost like triangulating uh, devices, right? Yeah. Uh, so the Bluetooth connection on their phones, if they're within range of this misplaced or lost item, you can get an alert saying, hey, this thing was, you know, was, was found in this area. Now, it won't pinpoint exactly where it is in that case, but it'll definitely lock it down to a very specific sort of area. And, and from there, if you, you can start to figure out, okay, well, let, let me see if I can go find it or at least have someone in the community help me find it, which is what Tile claims they've been so successful with, is that kind of crowdsource collaboration where someone is finding some, like a total stranger is basically finding the thing that you lost. Um, and, and then they claim they've had a lot of success with this. I've never ex experienced it personally, uh, but apparently many have. And so uh, that's why Tile seems to have done pretty well uh, with their product. Well, what's interesting with Tile, and this is going to be uh, something to watch over the next few years. I mean, it's only as good as how many people have Tiles and are connected on their smartphones to find your stuff if you lose it out in the wild. Uh, but there's been some announcements. Amazon, for example, has their new Amazon Sidewalk platform. We've talked a bit about it on the radio show, but this is a new neighborhood network that Amazon's envisioning that uh, will roll out that uses your existing Wi-Fi in your home and Amazon speakers to extend your network throughout the neighborhood, like kind of mesh together with your neighbors. And Tile apparently is one of the uh, the first group of third-party vendors that have signed up to be part of this. So it will make it even easier to find some of these Tile devices if they're lost. Yeah, I think it's na it's natural for Tile to move beyond Bluetooth yeah. because Bluetooth is not precise. So if they want it to move into something that would be Wi-Fi or cellular based, then now we're now we're talking a different language, and and we're talking about you know more precise, more pinpointed, uh, and they can expand even what what they could track or how it could be tracked. So I, I'm not surprised that they would make that. I mean, Tile also is trying; they've been trying for some time, and there are some products that, that have their their trackers embedded in, like Skull Candy has some headphones that have it embedded in there. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's not surprising that they're, that they're going this route. I, th I thought it was only a matter of time. In fact, with 5G, there may be something for Tile to do there, uh, given like how fast you can track something through 5G. But of course, the network is not really there yet. Uh, but I expect Tile to make a lot of moves on the network side uh, to expand how people can actually track lost items. What's going to be interesting, though, as I, you know, speaking about the next few years, rumors are that Apple is going to get into the game with their own location tracking system or device, which would be a major, major competitor to Tile. Big time. In fact, there were rumors that they were going to announce it this year, but that didn't happen at both the September and October events. Apple didn't say anything about any kind of a tracking thing, but uh, that could be coming. And if it does, then it would be a big competitor. The, the, the question then is, is would Apple ju just make it for iPhones? Uh, would it just make it for, for, for Apple products? Yes. Uh, <laughs> or, 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 yeah, I mean, probably. And then the, then the second question would be, would Apple look to create a licensing model for it so that manufacturers of other products then embed what Apple is, is doing into their devices. My guess is yes, because Apple loves revenue streams like that. So they probably would do it. But at this point, I haven't seen anything definitive to say that they are going to launch this type of a, a product and service. But you never know. Uh, they certainly could. My prediction. A lot of iPhones out there. Yes, my prediction. Apple is going to get into that game because it only makes sense. Uh, and Tile, that would be a very hard competition. Google buys Tile. Bam. Uh, yeah, yeah, very possible. I mean, you know, it happened to Fitbit, and yep. so you know, it could very much happen to Tile too. And I'll, I'll bet, I'll bet some, I'll bet some beers on that, Ted. 
Yeah, and I don't see any antitrust regulators blocking that. So No, not at all. Uh, one last question, uh, Ted. Uh, if you do subscribe to the Tile Premium service, which is about three fifty a month, you said, uh, is that limit to you to how many Tile devices you can have? Can, can it work from one to 50? Uh, no, no limit. No limit. You can have as many as you, as you want, basically, on, 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 on the fee account. So... But We've been talking with Ted Critsonos all about Tile Premium. If you want to check out uh, his great article on that, go to getconnectedmedia.com. We've got an excellent subscription series up there. So if you're thinking of subscribing to some of these different services out there, from music to books to tiles, check it out. Again, getconnectedmedia.com. Ted, thanks for joining us. Always a pleasure, guys. Thanks for having me. When we come back from the break, more tech to talk. Stay tuned. You're back with the App Show. Mike and John here. Well, Finally got our hands on the new iPhone 12 and 12 Pro. And uh, if you're watching the, uh, the video podcast, uh, you can check that out up on our website. Uh, we're actually uh, showing them off. John's got uh, the iPhone 12 in his hands, uh, the product red version. Kind of a nice red. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts overall? Um, well, I said this when we first saw the, the keynote. I love the flat sides instead of the rounded corners. And they're super comfortable in your hand. Um, the 12 is very nice to hold. Um, you've got the 12 Pro. Yeah, it's uh, it is a, a beautiful phone. I love I love this design here. I, I missed the iPhone 5 design with the square yeah. uh, edges here. It just feels really nice. Doesn't yeah. feel like it's going to slip out of your out of your hand. No, although it is very shiny. The, I, don't, I don't mind it. Yeah, I don't mind. I it. mean, it'll be in a case, but um, yeah, no kidding for, for most people. <laughs> um, but you know, it, the, the one interesting thing though that I did notice is the bezel is thicker than I thought. Yeah, you're it, right. It, it seems thicker than. Well, I guess it's about the same, really. And from your iPhone 11. Yeah. Yeah. So, another neat feature is the the MagSafe feature, and so they've actually put a magnet into the back of the new iPhones. And the idea behind that is that uh, if you're doing wireless charging, it's going to snap right onto the, the wireless charger. I've got a MagSafe uh, Apple charger that they sent me and it basically just kind of clicks right on. What surprises me is you're actually dangling it from that magnetic. Adapter. Oh, it's strong. It's strong. It's very strong. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's no way you're going to miss that. If you dropping it on your uh, charger at night on your bedside table. I think this is brilliant. And you know what? It is a problem because I have a wireless charger at my bedside, but so many times I'll put it on there and then in the morning, my phone is dead because it's not, I mean, it has to be on there properly because if it's not right in the center, yeah. it doesn't charge. Yeah. So Apple, uh, I can't believe someone else hasn't come up with this already. Uh, they've solved that problem. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm surprised this hasn't been some kind of a Kickstarter. Maybe it has been like someone doing that kind of a case thing, but it really needs to be integrated into the phone itself. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting though, because we also have the clear case and you can actually see the little ring that's there uh, for where that pass through happens. And I'm not sure on the clear case if it's magnet or if it's just a piece of metal that sort of boosts the magnet that's on the back of the phone. But it looks a little weird. It has a white ring on it. It's yeah. a clear case with a white ring. So. Yeah. You've got, you know, you've just spent fourteen hundred dollars on your new <laughs> iPhone 12 Pro, and it's just got this weird white ring on the back. Yeah, I wouldn't get the clear case. No, no, I'm getting the the green case. It's coming. Uh, so some other uh, things uh, we've noticed just the size. You've uh, you actually 3D printed a uh, a mini. <laughs> well, well, I'll hold it up to the 12 just uh, on the video podcast. So you can sort of see the difference. So yeah, I 3D printed the rough shape of the iPhone. 12 mini that's coming in November. Uh, we don't have it yet, but we do have this 3D printed blank just to sort of see. And I mean, this reminds me of the old iPhone. It's an iPhone 5, but with a bigger screen because there's no bezels on it. Right. Essentially. Yeah. And you know, you get the, the nice cameras on the back and everything like that, but it is quite a bit smaller than even the 12. So um, I think that's going to be appealing for a lot of people that don't want a giant phone. And I know a lot of people that they hate having giant phones. And you know, the smallest iPhone you could get is still pretty big compared to what these were let's talk about the packaging this is this is interesting and it's going to spawn a whole new uh i guess accessories <laughs> bonanza so the new packaging is dramatically smaller than the uh, the old one uh do i have one here yeah it's behind your laptop oh, i've hidden it ah. okay uh if you're watching the video podcast uh, you probably know how thick an iphone box is 
the the new ones are like half the size because they're not putting in the headphones or the charger anymore. It does right. come with the cable, uh, but you're gonna have to have that little charging block. Yep, to charge it, and you'll have to have a special one because uh, it still uses lightning, but on the other end is USB C. It's that smaller universal port that all the new phones and devices have. But just to clarify, you don't need that. You can still use your old cable you got at the gas station uh, to charge your, your new phone. Um, <laughs> it's just if you want to use the cable that's included. The funny thing is, is I actually looked into my iPhone 11 box because I'm selling it to a coworker and I still had the headphone jack or the headphones yeah. and the cable untouched because I never used them. Well, a lot of people are complaining you know, know, I'm spending $1,400 on this phone. They can throw in a headset and the charger. But I, clearly there must be some, you know, uh, stats that show that a lot of people do what I did and not use them. No, I know. Because I, I think of all the iPhone boxes I have. And uh, used to be iPhone lightning cables. They were kind of a premium in this house. Now they're coming out of every drawer. Yeah. And the little charger blocks, I've got honestly a drawer full of like, honestly, a couple dozen from different manufacturers. Well, well, and the thing is in your house, I know because I did it, we've installed outlets that actually have USB charging ports built in. Yeah. And that, you know, all the new houses will have that. Yeah. And you, you can retrofit. I'm, that's what I'm doing now. Yeah. And so, a lot of restaurants and bars, they start to, if they have that feature or maybe a coffee shop, a lot of them have USB ports as well. Uh, but if you are missing it, I'm going to give a shout out to uh, some local guys here. Uh, Logics out of North Van. Uh, you can get all their stuff in London Drugs and a bunch of other stores. Uh, they've got an essential kit that basically has the charger and headphones if you need it. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. And they look like little Apple headphones. They do. They also have a really nice version of it that are in black as well. Oh, I didn't know that. I just thought white. No, the, the Tune Freaks that you also have. Somewhere. Oh, that's right. I think somewhere. On another table somewhere. But um, yeah, they're very nice and they have like the volume slider and all that kind of stuff. So my, you know, I've had this for a few days now. Uh, my first impressions, it's beautiful. There's yeah. no question. Uh, the question is, should you upgrade? Because I've, I've had people ask me already. I've gotten an, uh, an iPhone 11 or an iPhone 11 Pro. Should I upgrade? I know you are, John, because you're just a nerd. Well, yeah, but we talked about this last week. I, I'm upgrading because it has LiDAR. That's important for me. It's a better camera. Um, which is also important for me. I mean, I take a lot of the photos that we use on our website. So, with, and they're great photos with these with yeah. these with these phones. So, um, how come you're not paying for my phone then? <laughs> Can't afford it, John. They're, they're too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> but let's talk about the price. So, the Pro is thirteen ninety nine. Uh, the regular eleven uh, is eleven twenty nine. Yeah, and when that's the, that's the starting point with the base memory. Yeah. And the the mini when it comes out will be nine seventy nine. Yeah, so it's up there. It definitely is up there. But you know, I guess you got to look at what's inside them. Well, and it's interesting too because a lot of the carriers now realize people have sticker shock from this type of stuff. They have different plans and promotions to basically uh, have like a payment plan for those things. So in addition to your your cell phone plan, you pay say for an iPhone. 40 or $50 more a month and you don't have to put anything down. And the problem is, is at the end of the term of your two-year term, you might have to give the phone back. Yeah. That's a weird new plan. Yeah. I don't like it. Well, I like the idea of it. It's like, it's like a, you're leasing your phone. Right. Right. And I get that, but you can also choose to buy it out. Right. Which is basically any money that you saved by not putting any money down, you have to pay at the end. Got it. Okay. So, so you do have that option. You do have that option. But and, yeah, some of the curious, like for example, Shaw, my, my wife's on there and she wanted a new iPhone 11 <laughs> about a month ago. Great timing, Mike. Um, they had uh, a plan where if you locked in for two years on like a, a, a payment plan, you'd, they'd knock off a few hundred bucks. Yeah. So, I mean, I think she's saving about 250 bucks or maybe a little bit more. No, I think it's closer to like 350. Yeah, okay. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. But I mean that's again I mean, that's great over the, over the over the term of 2 years. Yeah. And you know, to be honest, I think the average person is probably hanging on to their phone for 2 to 3 years now. Yeah. So, especially when they're on these kind of price points. So, should you upgrade? Good question. If you've got an 11, might not be as compelling. You still have a fantastic phone and fantastic camera. I think anything 10 and below, you might look at it. 
just with the new cameras they have in the 11s and the 12 here, 12s here now, they're just fantastic, especially for me, the low light. Yeah. You know, if you were taking pictures at night, you know, in your restaurant with your friends. During COVID. During COVID. <laughs> the pictures are amazing. It doesn't even use the flash anymore. The sensor can take in so much light and just, it's beautiful. The photos are beautiful. Yeah. No, and then, and then if you're remotely interested in photography or you got to get the photo for the gram, whatever, there, you can't beat these cameras right now for another week until another phone comes out. <laughs> Exactly. Okay, we're going to have to take a break, but still lots more to talk about here on the app show, including our pick for the spookiest Halloween apps. Stay tuned. You're back with the app show, Mike and John here. Well, if you're looking for some things to do on Halloween with the family, we're going to talk about uh, some uh, cool games you can uh, load on your uh, Apple TV or laptop or Xbox, many different devices. I think we've talked about them before, John, uh, the Jackbox uh, series of uh, games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are, uh, it's a whole series. There's, I think, seven or eight packs of them now. Yeah. And they, they, depending on the platform, they're, you know, as cheap as a couple of bucks up to 20 or $30, depending on the platform per I think pack. The, yeah, the pack, I think the, the newest ones are like typically 35 bucks now. Yeah, but they go on sale all the time. Yeah. And uh, I imagine there'll be a bit of a... a a bump for Halloween because this is when, you know, at least families get together and do something. Uh, the nice thing is you don't need controllers for everybody. Everyone just uses a smartphone or a tablet and you put the main screen up and you were given a code. You enter the code on your phone and then your phone becomes the uh, controller, the controller, which is great uh, or a tablet or even your computer. So this works on a number of different platforms. As, as I was saying, I have Apple TV, so I loaded it for yep. my Apple TV yep. so I can have it up on the big screen, but it works on Xboxes, Nintendo switches and steam. Uh, so any, any computer basically um, PlayStation and um, yeah, it, it, they're really, they're really a lot of fun. The thing is, I think when, <laughs> when the pandemic started, everyone was stuck at home and yeah. playing these games. So the hunt is on for the next big thing. And the one I found that looks really cool, and I'm looking forward to having an opportunity to play this with some friends. And you can even do this just by you know having a Zoom call and having the Zoom camera pointed at your TV and you can have your friends remotely play along um, is called Use Your Words. And it's a similar style to Jackbox. Um, on the Nintendo, it's about $17 to buy. And I think it's probably about the same price. Uh, that's Canadian um, on Steam and other platforms. It's not available for Apple TV though. Uh, so Mike won't be playing it. Yeah, so why are we even talking about this? <laughs> <laughs> but, but it looks fun. It looks fun, yeah. Because I mean, like some of the 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 the, the word-based games on Jackbox, the idea behind this one is that you have to come up quickly with a... Uh, uh, snarky, fun, dirty, filthy, whatever your audience in the room is sort of up for. Yeah, it can be PG up yeah. to adults, right? Yeah, yeah. So one of the examples in their trailer is like, you get to add subtitles to a movie. Yes. Which looks like super fun. Yeah, or a newspaper headline. Yeah. And then people vote on the funniest one. Yeah. And then you can win if you're funny. Right. Or clever or, or witty. Or drunk. Or drunk. Yeah, but the, I like the Jackbox games too because their party packs have a bunch of different games, like typically four or five games, like everything from like Pictionary type games to word games. Have you ever played it and not like literally split a gut laughing? Oh my God, it is so fun. Yeah. Yeah, it is so fun. If you're tired of your family or the few friends that are allowed in your house, <laughs> this this is definitely something that honestly, it just livens up the whole night. Like it, yeah. it it's so fun. And it's so easy and anyone can play. Like I've had my fiance's parents play this Yeah, and they're in their eighties and they were dirtier and raunchier than we ever expected. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to know that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So again, uh, Jackbox uh, games, Jackbox party packs, and it, it's available on most uh, platforms. Yeah. Uh, but the other one you're saying. Use your words is just, it's available on pretty much everything except for Apple TV as far as I know. Yeah, that sucks. But anyway, check them out. Like seriously. And I know, you know, $35, it is worth every penny. They have a couple you can just get, like you can get, I think uh, Drawful 2 is like 2 or $3 on most platforms. Yes. Yeah. At least just try that out. Try the one game before yeah. you get the uh, the party pack. I want to thank all the folks that helped put the, the show together. Of course, John, uh, my co-host, he's one of the producers. And uh, 
our senior producer, Christina, who helps uh, get everything happening here and the rest of the folks back of the team. Don't forget, we're giving away a Roku Stream Bar. Check it out at getconnectedmedia.com. Hit the newsletter tab. All the instructions are there on entering to win. We'll see you again next time.